Bonjour les élèves, um, me voici encore à la maison, donc je vais juste expliquer votre travail pour aujourd'hui. Qu'est-ce que j'aimerais que vous faisiez, c'est de compléter vos notes sur la recherche scientifique, so, remplir les feuilles que vous avez reçues uh, mercredi et jeudi. Um, quand tout ça est complété, um, j'aimerais que vous continuiez à travailler sur votre projet, sur le projet de recherche sur un scientifique canadien. La grille est ici, donc um, juste un rappel que je m'attends à voir une présentation de PowerPoint, Prezi, Keynote, uh, Pictograph, affiche, une, une affiche ou un document Word avec de l'information au sujet du scientifique que tu as choisi. Um, la liste ici, c'est pas la liste uh, finale, donc si vous trouvez quelqu'un qui n'est pas sur cette liste, mais qui est canadien et a travaillé dans le domaine de sciences, vous pouvez choisir cette personne-là, uh, c'est certain. Donc, pour vous inspirer, j'ai trouvé quelques vidéos qui parlent des inventions ou de, qui parlent de, des personnes qui sont canadiens qui ont fait des contributions dans le domaine de sciences. Donc, um, on va prendre quelques minutes pour regarder ces vidéos-là. Um, donc, j'ai juste uh, trouvé un site qui, là, qui parle des uh, inventions. Donc, le premier, c'est l'insuline. Donc, regardons la vidéo qui explique cette invention et introduit uh, une, une des personnes qui se retrouve sur la liste. Made in Canada. Creative. Innovative. And sometimes mind boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Have you said thank you to your pancreas lately? The pancreas is an organ behind your stomach. It makes insulin to help you use and store the sugar from your food. Diabetes is a disease that is caused by problems with insulin. For thousands of years, there was no successful treatment for this disease. People with diabetes eventually fell into a coma and died. In 1921, Dr. Frederick Banton of Allenston, Ontario, and Charles Best from West Pembroke, Maine, began working together at the University of Toronto to find out how to use insulin to treat diabetes. Dr. Banting's idea was to extract insulin from the pancreas and inject it into patients. Another scientist, Dr. James Bertram Collip, perfected the extract, and Banting and Best tried it out on diabetic dogs. When the dog's blood sugar levels dropped, Banting and Best knew their experiments were a success. They tried the insulin on humans with diabetes, and the results were dramatic. Soon, patients from near and far were traveling to Toronto to try out this miracle treatment. Today, insulin has helped millions around the world. Donc, je crois que plus... Uh, beaucoup d'informations au sujet de ces deux scientifiques-là. So, si ça, ça vous intéresse, vous pouvez choisir uh, ce, cette personne. Uh, L'autre, c'est le Canada Arm. Donc, uh, c'est des ingénieurs de Brampton qui ont aidé avec cette découverte. So, regardons. Made in Canada. Creative, innovative, and sometimes mind-boggling contributions Canadians have made to the world. Imagine flying around the Earth in a space shuttle. Outside your porthole floats something shiny and strange. You'd love to grab it for a better look, but without gravity, everything you reach for spins away the second you touch it. This problem frustrated astronauts at NASA until 1981. That was the year that a group of Canadian engineers in Brampton, Ontario, finished building an out-of-this-world invention, the Canada Arm. This 15-meter robotic arm reaches out from a space shuttle to launch or retrieve objects in outer space. Astronauts operate the arm remotely using special controllers. The Canadarm has been instrumental in space research and development in more than 50 missions. It has been used for all sorts of projects, from retrieving satellites, to fixing the Hubble telescope, to building the International Space Station. 
Donc ça, c'est pas une personne euh, spécifique, mais c'est euh, intéressant de savoir. Um, donc ici, un canot, uh, du blé, le paint roller. world. Think about how long it would take to paint an entire building with just a brush. Until 1940, that's how it was done. Then, Norman Brakey of Toronto, Ontario, created a simple roller that made painting faster than ever before. He slid a cylinder of absorbent material onto a handle, dipped the cylinder in paint, and smoothed color onto walls in record time. Brakey could never produce enough rollers to make much money, and he didn't have the cash to patent his new invention. Other people took his idea, made a few changes, and patented the roller as their own. The roller was an almost instant success, not only because it was easy and efficient, but because the Second World War caused a shortage of paintbrushes in North America. Soon, painters across Canada and the United States were using paint rollers, but Brakey died without ever receiving a penny for his idea. Uh, et continuons, the Robertson screw, so ça c'est un vid, un vis. Metal screws used for fastening two objects together have been around for hundreds of years. But some types of screws are better than others. In 1908, a tool salesman named Peter L. Robertson from Milford, Ontario, cut his hand while trying to use a typical slot-headed screw and screwdriver. The injury led him to invent a new type of screw, one with a square-shaped head. The style was a huge improvement. The square-shaped socket on the screw's head made it much harder for a screwdriver to slip when in use. And this, in turn, made fastening things much easier and faster. People in the construction industry were thrilled with this new Robertson screw. Robertson also invented the Robertson screwdriver to use with the screw, of course. Maintenant, cette personne n'est pas nécessairement euh, dans le monde des sciences, donc c'est pas quelque chose que vous pourriez euh, utiliser pour votre projet, mais je pensais que c'était intéressant. Uh, the pacemaker, uh, so ça c'est un ingénieur, ça so c'est peut-être quelque chose qui vous intéresse si vous connaissez quelqu'un qui a un pacemaker. Ever wonder how doctors operate on a beating heart? One trick is to slow the heart down. In the 1940s, Canadian doctors did this with extreme cold, but they weren't sure what to do if the heart stopped working altogether. Electrical engineer John Hobbs from Winnipeg, Manitoba began experimenting with radio frequency as a body warmer. And that's when he discovered that a stopped heart could be started again mechanically or electrically. He developed the world's first pacemaker in 1950. A pacemaker uses electrical pulses to prompt the heart to beat. Hobbs' pacemaker used vacuum tubes to create the pulses and it needed to be plugged in to work. It was also 30 centimeters long and several centimeters high and wide, too big to fit inside a human body. But other inventors took Hobbs' invention and then use transistors and batteries to make the pacemaker smaller and portable. These days, pacemakers are as small as a quarter and are implanted directly into the human chest. Voilà. 
Euh, ici, on a... Euh, encore, ce n'est pas un, une personne scientifique dans le monde des sciences. Euh, on a une électrique compagnie à Ottawa euh, qui a inventé le four électrique. At a time when ovens used wood or gas for heat, Thomas Ahern amazed the world by chaining electricity and using it to cook a meal. As co-owner of an electrical company in Ottawa, Ontario, he was devoted to promoting the wonders of electricity. In 1892, his electric oven was big news. Made of bricks, it stood six feet high and six feet wide. Two electric heaters provided steady heat and covered peepholes let Ahern watch the food inside bake to perfection. The first meal he cooked was for a high society crowd at the Windsor Hotel. He made 21 dishes from trout to strawberry puffs, and guests were so impressed that the Windsor Hotel immediately ordered an electric oven for its own use. In time, people around the world would come to prefer electric ovens for their easy use and their dry, even heat, which is ideal for baking or roasting. <laughs> Six meters, that's a gros four. Um, the Blackberry, um, vous pouvez lire un peu au sujet, le motoneige et dernièrement le Foghorn. Donc j'espère que cette présentation et ces vidéos vous ont inspiré à choisir quelque chose ou quelqu'un pour faire votre projet. Um, Laissez-moi savoir si vous avez des questions, je suis disponible à travers le Teams. Uh, donc... Uh, J'espère que vous avez une bonne période et, et je vous souhaite un, un bon, <rire> beau fin de semaine, une bonne fin de semaine et j'espère de vous voir lundi. Ha! Bye!